Thanks for joining me today as we create these beautiful cards using rub-on transfers, something I haven't used in years and I'm so excited to share this with you. This is Jen Lee with Gentastic Journey and that includes card crafting. So today I found all these beautiful rub-on transfers and I've been looking for some for a while and these are exactly what I was looking for. I think they're all really gorgeous, kind of big, so they will be perfect focus points for these cards. I really like those boots and <laughs> these are all just absolutely gorgeous. So they're two different sets and we'll move on with those. I have an off-white card base and a white card base and then I took out my sticky mat just because I thought it would be easier for things to be stuck down while I'm trying to rub these on. And now I'm just going to try and make sure that my rub-on transfers are going to fit my four and a quarter by five and a half card bases. So because I haven't used these in a while, you'll see I make a couple of drastic mistakes to start off with. And the first is I took the backing off and then realized that there's some extra pieces on here that actually don't belong to that picture. And so I cut them off, but now that the backing is off, those are very delicate and you'll see I ruin those later on. So you could see I can't even get it off the table there. And this one I got stuck all over my finger. So <laughs> we'll just put those to the side. So I apologize for the glare, but that's from my overhead light. And I'm just taking a bone folder and making sure the rub-on transfer is all set. And you just are supposed to take it off very slowly and that way nothing adheres and if you start to see something adhere just rub it back over it again. So that's my first one. These come out kind of matte so there's really no sheen to it but they're very well adhered and looks gorgeous. Obviously I can't just leave this like this because as card crafters <laughs> we can't just leave well enough alone. So I'm going to add a few more things uh, mostly to the inside and then we'll jazz up the outside as well. So I cut out a coordinating flower out of a different sheet and we're just going to put that in the upper corner which is not where I usually put things but I really liked that there so <laughs> getting outside of my norm right we all try and do that as well now I will say that because I cut these pretty close uh, I did need to use my crafting tweezers to get the plastic part the top part off and there we go okay so I wanted these to be not too crazy but I did want to add a little something and so I think this lace is going to be exactly what I'm looking for it's such a great centerpiece that I don't want to take away from that so some white lace is just going to add a little bit of something to this card and I have something in mind for all the cards I'm making today I won't reveal it because it's for it's a gift so you'll just have to to trust me on that. <laughs> All right, so just gluing these on, and it's interesting, this lace wasn't that easy to glue, glue on. It actually moved around quite a bit. I think it's a nylon based. Uh, so we're going to set that to the side and let it dry. Then on to the second card, and I really liked this picture of the two chairs, and it's got a bunch of stuff above it. So I'm smarter this time, and I'm going to cut it off before I take the backing off. <laughs> And so there's just a few butterflies, there's a, a little flower set, there's one at the top as well. So getting all those cut off and we'll see what that looks like. And I can always use these for another card or I can use these inside, which you'll see I do a little later on. So we're going to put that as our focal point. Now I'll take off the backing now that I've cut everything off and just trying to center that there. Now I have been using this bone folder. My The bottom of my bone folder, I scraped it on something and so it's a little bit scratchy. So I'm going to try my other bone folder and that works okay. It actually came with a little spatula looking thing and you'll see later on I try that and that actually works perfectly. So I don't know why I was complicating it by trying to use other tools that I had, but that's a gorgeous focal point. Love those chairs, love the butterflies and the flowers. It's a beautiful scene. So on the inside, I'm going to put one of the butterflies that coordinates. We'll put that in the upper right corner and then in the bottom left corner, we will add this little rose. And I usually try and do those two corners, if anything, because that's usually not where you're going to write. I do like to coordinate the inside and the outside of my cards. Also the envelopes, but more on that later. <laughs> and the sticky mat is still really sticky. I've been using it for months, but it's a really sticky one, even though it's supposedly a standard stick. Uh, I appreciate it. I just wish I bottom was sticky too, because it does move around my desk quite a bit, the pink mat. Okay, so this one, I'm going to use this one, which has a lot going on, some writing, 
and some different flowers, but it's all in the same general color family. Although I can't use all of it together. That rose in the top left corner is quite a bit darker. And so I end up not using some of this, but it doesn't all need to match. And it is generally a purplish bluish grouping, but I'm just cutting a few things out. I was thinking that I could just kind of hodgepodge these all together, but you'll see I come up with a different idea. So this is just a piece of cardstock, and so it doesn't really matter where these go when I set them down. I just want to be able to get them all on here so that I can do something with them here in a minute, and everything's sticking to my sticky pad. <laughs> so now I'm just looking for another one that has that same purpley blue in it, or something that would coordinate and this little bird struck my eye and I really liked that. We'll include a little bird on there and then I'm going to need something for that top left corner and I found it. So we'll just use this little bunch of flowers and some of that cool writing. This one I'm having trouble taking it off but once we get it off we'll throw it on here and then see what we want to do with this little group. So here's the spatula that came with it and it seems to do just fine. I was getting a little nervous with all that writing like how is that going to come off when, when I pull this apart? But it actually worked really, really well. I did have to take out the spatula a couple times and you could see my little mat is just going all over the place. And then I inadvertently stuck those two to each other and it's fine because nobody knew it. And there's a few less flowers nobody needs to know except for you and me. Okay, taking these last two pieces off. And this was just a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Rub on transfers from when I was younger uh, as a kid just seemed like it was a lot harder for some reason, but maybe it's because I was a kid, who knows. I decided I'm just going to tear all these out instead of cutting them out or die. I was thinking about maybe die cutting them out. I'm not always a good messy card maker and this has got more of a messy look, but hey, we all need to get outside of our comfort zones and so this is actually going much smoother than I thought. Sometimes when I try and tear, it looks like a two-year-old did it, which I guess it's not supposed to look super precise and professional, but I decided to leave that one side straight just to see if I wanted to maybe put those in corners, but you'll see later on I do change my mind on that. So here's my card base, and now I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to want these, and even though I kind of figured this out right here, um, you'll see later on I completely change it around, and that's the beauty of it. We could do whatever we want here. I do feel though that I have enough to get major sections of the card covered. I almost threw that one to the side and decided not to use it, but then I came back to it because I really like it. I like the little purple butterflies at the top. I'm just going to have to cut everything down just a little bit more or tear everything down a little bit more and then we'll make enough space for everything. I didn't want to cover those purple butterflies and I really didn't want to cover that pot of flowers so I'm struggling a little bit and just keep tearing which is fine. Now I took out my vintage photo colored Distress Oxide and this is something that's always good like if you want to make something look a little vintagey. I am going to just dab this around the edges that way when I put this all down it'll all have a little definition and I do plan to put these on different dimensions so I'll use some flat and some with some dimensionals and that way it'll give this card a little bit of an interesting look. So I kind of started with my first card was super super simple and that's always good when you need a quick card and then I've progressively gotten to some more difficult cards and you'll see that my other card that I started, I am going to finish that off in a little bit. This one was one that I just wanted to get some of this done. It's nice when you can make several cards and that way if you need things to dry in between, you can set them to the side and then come back to them. Or if you aren't sure what you wanna do, you can come back to them. Okay, so we've got all of our pieces. Now we're gonna assemble again, but I decided I wanted to put some of this vintage photo on the edges of the card as well, just to tie it all together. And I didn't put it too terribly much, just enough to tie it together. You can also do this on the inside. You could do this with a color. Instead of vintage photo, I was just looking for it to be look like it's vintage, I guess. <laughs> especially with those torn edges. I think that looks kind of cool. All right, so we're going to attempt to do this again. You can see that I've moved this around a little bit. And then even when I go to glue it all down, you'll see I move it one more time because it's just, it, it's what happens. So this one I'm using foam tape on. So this will definitely stick out more than the other three pieces. And I do want to make sure that I've got plenty of it on there. You know how I am about my foam tape. I do put most things through the mail. So I want to make sure that nothing gets flattened in weird spots. 
And then I'm putting some foam tape on this small one as well. And then we'll put foam tape on that last one. I'm gonna do something different with the biggest one. So I decided to use my Ranger Multimedium Matte Finish Glue. I'm just gonna use my fingers so I don't have a bunch smooshing out all over. And this will allow me to kind of move that around a little bit and plus it'll be flat onto the paper. Whoops, almost upside down. <laughs> and then I'll start to take off these backings of the rest of the foam tape and then those will sit on top of that base one, which if you remember, isn't the way I originally set it up, but that's all right. I like the way this came out. So I'm still not covering up that whole planter, which is what I really liked, and that little purple flowers peeking out, and then you get to see all that pretty writing. I just really love how this came out. So then I've got some open white spaces, and I'm certainly gonna put some sentiments on these later on, but I don't wanna do that today because, at least not on camera, because this is for a gift, but I will want to fill up some of those white spaces. I'm gonna use some very small scripted sentiments and just stick those throughout all of these cards, but off screen, I will do that. This is another pretty purple one. And then this will be directly on that card base. So just one more level of dimension, fills up some of those spaces. And then I just cut off a piece of script and just put that at the top. And that way it looks very, very balanced. Could have probably some put something else on that right side or left side, but I didn't want it to be overly done. It's already pretty busy on there. Now for the inside, I'm just cutting off this really pretty piece and I'm gonna put it in that corner there, which usually has the least amount of writing when I write a note. So back to this second one we started. I really like this and I'm a little bit nervous that I'm gonna get too overboard and then <laughs> you're gonna lose that focus, but this is speckled egg and it's a very pretty light blue, so I'm hoping that I don't go overboard. And I'm just using that scrap piece just to make sure I don't go too much onto that focal point, the rub-on transfer itself. But I want it to look kind of beachy, and then I'll blend it. But it kind of looks like that those chairs are have almost a shine on it, like those are definitely the focal point of this card. And I like this paper. This is a Nina white cardstock, and this usually does pretty well for me with when it comes to blending. It's not as amazing as watercolor paper or anything like that, but it does okay for me. And I'm not looking for this to be amazingly blended anyway. I'm just looking for it to have a little bit of color. And again, that is speckled egg is the color of that distress oxide. And then this is bundled sage. And I pull out my cutting mat because I was getting the distress oxide all over the place which is fine, it still comes off of my sticky mat. Now here I wanted to have just a little bit heavier of a layer at the bottom. Again, I didn't cover that up because I felt like the top of it was shining through. I put a little bit of the bundled sage at the corners just to tie it all together. Now I'm looking at it saying, hmm, I like it, but it needs something. So I have the spray that I recently got and I'm having fun with it. And I'll show it to you in a second, but this is what it looks like. It's a, it's a pretty golden color. And I'm gonna set that aside to dry. This is called an airless mister. Next, I'm going to try this beautiful window scene. And I'm just trying to decide if I want this up and down, if I want this at the top, or if I wanna do something towards the bottom, maybe where I put a sentiment. Let's get this cutting mat out of here and we'll go back to this. We're using salty for the distress oxide. And this is a much brighter blue, but I'm gonna put this at the top. I always make sure, because I have done a bunch of stuff and then I'm on the wrong side of the card. So I just opened that up for a peek. Blended that off camera. And then here is the distress oxide in rustic wilderness. It's a much deeper green than the other green I was using the bundled sage. This is one of my favorite Christmassy colors and it's good for any kind of scene where you're looking for it to look like it's grassy or any kind of greenery, it's really a good color for. Again, I'm I'm never too concerned about how I blend and you can see here that that's not the best blending in the world, but I also wanted it to look a little choppy at the top because that's supposed to be the sky and then the bottom is supposed to be looking kind of at the distance so there's some choppier parts up front. And I just wanted to make sure I didn't get anything in the center because I wasn't sure if that center of the window was actually clear or if it was white. So if it was 
clear. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't blue back there, although I guess that would have matched as well. So I'm using the little tool that came with these rub-on transfers and rubbing that across. I can't find my tweezers right now, so I'm using my pick tool. <laughs> Picking up, using my bone folder to put a couple more of those in place. These rub-on transfers come out really, really easy. I want to do something else with this. So I'm staring at it going, what would make this beautiful thing even more beautiful? And I've decided I want to do some edge die cutting. I have lots of them, and so I'm just trying them all out. It's such a pretty focal point that I want to make sure that it does it justice. So I think I picked out this one. And for those of you that don't know this, I store my dies on these magnetic sheets. Okay, and I die cut though that, that out, and I think that just gives it a little something, right? I like the way that came out, and then I'm just going to use, again, some of my multi Ranger Multimedia Matte Finish Glue. I didn't used to use my finger on all these, but it just saves it a little bit. Not that you're going to see any glue that swooshes out, but... And that's pretty. I like the way that just gave it something, right? Sometimes it's just a little something. And then I've decided I'm going to put these on the inside because I think that'll look cute and it'll tie it all together. I actually flipped it so the blue is on the bottom and the green will be on the top. Could have done just one and maybe put some on the corners, but I thought that would be pretty. And then based on a sentiment I'll put on the inside as well, I think that'll be really cute. And I like how that turned out. Okay, back to this one. So it's a little bit dry now. But again, and that was, if you remember, that was just on a, that's a card base. So I'm going to actually use a corner punch with this. And for my corner punches, I always turn them around because I am not ever, I just don't get them right if I don't turn them over. Like it just goes in the wrong corner or something. And this is my favorite one of this corner punch piece. It's a little harder to do it when it's upside down, but it works. I just thought that gave it a lot. Sometimes just a nice corner does something for it. I really liked how this one came out. I'll probably put some beads on it later, but this is for a gift, so I don't want them to be too too thick to go through the mail because I have all the extra stamps to do that kind of stuff, but other people that get this as a gift wouldn't necessarily want to put the extra postage on it. So I'm just having you look through these. That one's the one with the little shimmer spray on it, and I loved this. I had no idea I was going to like this so much. I went ahead and made a bunch more of these and had a blast with it. So thanks for joining me today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, and also, if you enjoyed this content, hit the like button. This channel has lots of different content on it. It's all about my gentastic journey through early semi-retirement. I'm having a blast doing cards with you and RV travel and getting healthy and helping our dogs live their happiest, healthiest lives as well. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.